Hi everyone, welcome to tutorial 82 of our introductory Python for image processing tutorial series. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do image segmentation using traditional machine learning, but on a peer. In the last four tutorials, we have done exactly this, but where we have coded every line in Python. Now we took that and we created a couple of modules on a peer platform. So you can just upload your image stacks and you can just go ahead and segment your images. And it works on most images. So please go ahead and check like uh, if it's working for your images, if so, great. If not, uh, you may have to find alternative uh, ways to segment your images. But just in case you're curious what we are talking about, in case you haven't watched the previous tutorials, we're talking about taking your input image and corresponding mask and doing feature extraction, training a machine learning algorithm, creating a model, a trained model. And now we are going to take the trained model and then segment a whole bunch of images. So all of that on a peer without writing a line of code, starting with how to generate your own labels. So let's have a quick look at that on a peer. First of all, go ahead and type www.appear.com. If you have never signed up or never logged on to a peer, you would run into a page that looks like this. Go ahead and click on sign up. It should take a few, uh, couple of minutes for you to sign up. Once you log in, it should look somewhat like this. Okay. And now on the left hand side, you'll see uh, a few uh, areas here. So, first one, it uh, says community content. The next one says my lab. Okay. The community content is visible to everyone. Anyone can see community content. So this is like your public app store. Okay. My lab, no one can see it. It's only you can see it. You can upload your files. You can upload up to 100 GB of free file storage. So please use it. You can, uh, you can, uh, share those. You can send the link so others can just visualize your images, interact with your images. You can download them. You can visualize them. You can annotate them. We'll see annotation part in a second. Okay. And uh, public workflows are the workflows that a peer team put together or someone else actually put together. So it's useful for you. Now, uh, uh, there is one that's called image segmentation using random forest. And this is the one we will be using today. Now, public modules are individual modules. A workflow is where you put the modules together into a meaningful form. Individual modules, in this case, it's the, uh, this is a great one, try this. Cell pose segmentation, this segments your uh, cells, not just nuclei. If you have multi-channel image, you can say, okay, my channel number two is uh, cytoplasm, channel number three is the nuclei. It does an amazing, amazing job in segmenting this. This is based on a public uh, you know, code and public paper. And the random forest predict and random forest train are the modules we're going to use. And uh, you can click on a module to learn more about it. And here it says that, okay, it takes two inputs. The first one is a train stack and the second one is a label stack. And a train stack is, you can give a single TIFF image or a TIFF stack. I think TIFF stack is always better so you can work with multiple images. Unlike where we have coded here before, where we loaded images as single images. I do not have that anymore, apparently, but loaded single images. Here, you work with stacks, which makes it easy. Okay, and uh, the label stack is the st corresponding stack with labels. I'll show you how to generate that in a minute. And this actually works uh, great on most of uh, the images. And uh, if you really want a solution that's completely integrated into your Zen, if you're a Zeiss user, you already have Zen, then uh, look up Zen IntelliSys. And uh, we give, I believe, 30 day free trial for IntelliSys where you can paint and you can do things. And it's, it's amazing. It works on multi-channel images. It works on tiled images. So if you really want to uh, a solution for your research, then go ahead and uh, get this. Of course, that has some price tag onto it. Go ahead and pay that price, and this is definitely worth it for your research. If you're doing it for your personal thing, you're learning Python, you want to do some of these, uh, you know, uh, segmentation tasks, and you like things to be free, go ahead and use a peer or do your own coding. So let's focus on a peer. If you want to start with uh, this random forest train, you can go ahead and create a workflow. My workflow for random forest okay just give it a name and it starts 
with a blank workflow, okay? And here you can actually add what inputs does it take? A training stack and a label stack. So let's go ahead and add a step in between for input, module input, and then let's connect these two. It's very easy. And uh, once you, uh, let's, while we are doing this, let's go ahead and this input is train stack. Let's go ahead and select a peer files. I'll tell you three train images. So this is a stack of three images. Let's go ahead and use it. And the next module, again, I'm going to select my appear files. You can, you can upload your images from your computer. Since I already have it on appear, I'm just selecting these annotations. Where did I get these from? I'll show that in a second. So let's exit this out. I showed you little things quickly. We'll come back, okay? Discard and leave. Okay, so these are public modules. You can, you can create your own workflows using public modules or private modules workflows. Remember, we just started to do something. If I actually saved it, that would have showed up in here. So my workflow for R, well, in fact, it is showing up here, uh, but maybe partially. My modules, if you know how to code, hopefully you probably know how to code by now a little bit, then uh, you can easily put together a module. A module is a Docker container. Again, please uh, uh, look it up. And of course, uh, in this channel, in the Appear channel, we have videos on how to create your own module. So please look at that and create it. If you know a little bit of coding, you can do that. And you can create a module out of most scripting languages, Python, Java, image scripting, or any of those. And uh, you can connect these modules. That's the beauty of it. And here is a couple which one of our uh, uh, student interns actually uh, developed. These are, again, uh, great modules where it is uh, using deep learning to train a whole bunch of images, good images and bad images. And then it's going to sort good and bad. Why is it useful? Well, if I'm automating my analysis pipeline, why would I waste my computing time on bad images? So it sorts automatically and then only the good ones can be uh, analyzed in future. So this is how you can automate your workflows. So this is my modules. And again, creating a module is simple. You just pick a template like Python template, and then just uh, it creates a cookie cutter template and you can edit the code and you can create. And but there is a process, for example, if I click on, my module right there, it tells me, okay, first copy the code to local drive, then do this, then do this. So we try to make it as easy as possible. But if you have questions, always contact us in terms of how to create these modules. Next step, files. You can load up to, you can save up to 100 gigs of uh, storage. So as you can see, these are the ones that were available as part of my workflow earlier. So I uploaded them beforehand. You can upload them from Zen if you want, if you have a Zen uh, system uh, or Zen software. So, and you can initiate these workflows from Zen if you want. Okay, for all of that, just let us know that you have these questions. We'll definitely help you out get started. Okay, so how do you load? All you got to do is go ahead, browse, and then upload the files, or you can just go ahead and drag the files here. They get added here. And once they're added, you can visualize them. Remember, this eye icon will open it up just for preview. And this Pencil opens it up in annotate page. So if I click on this pencil thing, it opens it up into a page that looks like this, where I can add different classes. So I can say this class is background. The next class I want to add is, uh, I don't know, bright regions. And the next class I want to add, um, let's just say gray, okay? And you can change the colors. I can, I can change my background to look purple so it's easy for us to see. Bright regions can be red and the gray regions can be somewhere in between. And now to define my bright regions, I can select any of the tools. This polygon tool is very useful. Zoom in with your mouse, click, 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 click. And there you go. I try to select boundaries and carefully as much as I can because boundary pixels is where you will have a lot of ambiguity in classifying. The bright pixels are easy to classify. The boundary ones are different. So you got to do this. And if you go, go ahead and cancel after you're done with a given class. Now let's do gray and I'm going to show you brush tool. So if I zoom in, you see, this is what I mean by boundary pixels. Tell it exactly how you would like to label the boundary pixels. And then when you close it, it closes it all the way. Okay. And you can select it multiple ways. And remember, this is an image with a uh, tip stack with three images. So if you open the right hand side, I can go to the next image now. 
there you go that's the next image and i can just do my background or pores on the next image and i can just paint this region once you're done painting all of these regions then you just click on export and then export annotation as image for this segmentation purpose export it as binary mask and select all the classes you would like to export and then download so the image when you do that it looks somewhat like this these are the regions i annotated this is from my slice one in the stiff stack slice two slice three okay one two three so what do i have now i have three images let's exit out of this i have three images one two and three and corresponding masks so i have both of them available as part of my appear and by the way for now there is no way for you to get these masks once you label them you have to download and then re-upload uh, we are working on making it directly saving it to appear but as of uh, at least september 2020 download and then upload the mask should be small in size anyway so it should not be that big of a process i should say and typically the mass file name is same as your image file name the full file name with an extension underscore annotation dot ome dot tiff okay uh why ome dot tiff because o with ome dot tiff you can uh, handle 5d data sets with tiff you can only go up to 3d data sets so we chose to work with ome tiffs okay so we have the two things that we need which means we have these two the raw image and the labels now we are all set so let's go back to sorry for closing that now let's go back to our appear right here and go to modules and now let's create a new workflow go to public modules actually by the way you don't have to create this for this workflow we already have it here if i go to public workflows image segmentation using random forest if you click on edit you'll see the structure right here we have an input going as training stack we have an input going for label stack and then another input for test images and model file that gets created as part of training will be connected to the predict model so i'm going to show you exactly how to create that so you know how to put together other workflows okay so let's go to public modules and start with the one that we know we absolutely need which is the train and now let's create a workflow give it uh, again my rf workflow create now when you do that it gets added to your private collection of workflows and now i'm modifying it by adding more stuff so let's add an input module well for now let's add an input module in between these two okay module input and this one goes as my label so let's select the workflow input Again, you can browse and upload it from your computer, or you can, if you have your image link from Google Drive or something, you can provide it here. But because I've already uploaded this to appear, let's go ahead and select this. Okay, so I'm gonna select this, three train images uh, dot tiff. And the second input is for my annotation. There you go, that's my annotation. And the train, third module is random forest train go ahead and save it i can run this right now if i run this right now then uh, the outputs would be a model file but let's go ahead and test it how it is doing so what i'm trying to do here is let's go ahead and add a random forest predict module let's actually do random forest predict and model file is coming from here sometimes these links these links work automatically connect and they sometimes are logical but double check that it is actually doing the right job and the test image i can add another input here but i am already having or loading a image with three let's go back i'm already using this image except very few pixels from here are used for training so why not just predict this entire image stack okay so for that all we need to do is connect this to that I hope that makes sense so here we have a input stack of raw images three images in that stack and those are going as input to my random forest train but they are also going as test images input as my uh, random forest predict okay and then i could have added another module here and supplied completely different images okay but this workflow 
let's go ahead and run it and uh, let's see how the result looks like while it's working you can actually exit out of this screen go to your workflows and you can see that my RF workflow is right there okay and let's go ahead and look at public workflows and the one that we see here image segmentation and random for using random forest here all I'm trying to do is uh, instead of uh, using the same images you can upload other images so in this case I guess we are using uh, a completely different set of images over there yeah uh, so so this is another way of doing things okay so let's exit out of this no discard and leave and uh, if you wonder what's going on with that workflow just go to your results and then uh, look at the results and you see the it's it's already done image segmentation using random forest train and uh, predict this is already done right there uh, in fact did I close my my RF workflow results I'm not seeing those yet so let's run this one more time sorry about that maybe I have accidentally closed this so let's run this uh, maybe I didn't even initiate I just saved it and didn't even start so let's go ahead and do single slash batch run you see how it says workflow is pending and even if I exit from this screen so for example if I just go back to my appear you should see that you have one running workflow and when you view and click on it it should go back and it should show me the status of that workflow okay so this should take about a couple of minutes to finish and uh, we'll have a look at the results in a uh, in a second as soon as it's finished okay okay so the workflow is completed so let's click on see results so we can see the results and the good thing with appear is every module the logs are all stored so you can see exactly what parameters have been used the timestamps are there so you have full traceability so here for the module one this is the input module two that's the uh, input that we are providing and the random forest classifier here is the uh, pickle file that gets uh, you know the random forest trained file and in the step number four it's using this to segment the images and this is the final output so we can go ahead and click on the output by the way click on this I button so it opens up into a new uh, into a new uh, window so you can visualize it so this is basically the segmentation result of our input images here we could have input some other images here but let's see how this module uh, model actually uh, performed so here is the output so there you go so that's your uh, uh, that's your uh, slice number one in the Z stack that's your slice number two and that's the slice number three and you can compare that with your original images so here is the uh, this is slice number three of the original image so here is slice number one and here is the output okay so you can see and you can compare this so I let you work on your own images but I hope at least you see how easy things are once you create uh, your code into a module you can use the one that we already have up here in the public modules explore other models uh, other modules I should say that actually perform other tasks there are a lot of uh, the community started to contribute as you can see many people outside of a peer team are contributing so you'll hopefully find a uh, at least a module that works right away for you in fact if you are interested uh, you can also click on some of these you see you can download the code and you can copy the code if they are open source and obviously cite the right uh, references if you do copy the code but most of the modules we try to make sure they're all open source so you can download the code and you can explore it if you modify it and make it better please go ahead and upload back so others can benefit from your modifications or don't even publish it just use it personally so go ahead and sign up for appear and uh, make sure you start playing with your code and in fact you're creating an application out of the code that you're writing so that's basically what's going on with appear so thank you very much and i hope you found this tutorial to be useful and in the next tutorial let's uh, talk about a different topic until then please do not forget to subscribe to our appear channel thank you